Just before we get started with this video, a quick message from our sponsor, Skillshare. If you happen to be bored at home right now and looking for things to do, why not learn some new skills on Skillshare? The first 1,000 of you to click the Skillshare link below will get a free two-month premium membership to explore your creativity and level up your skills. More on Skillshare in a bit. Moving on from there, I'm sure you're all wondering, hey, where's Simon? Well, suffice it to say, Simon presently finds himself unable to speak. Speaking of talking about things, ever wonder if there is an objectively superior way to hang toilet paper? Well, it turns out yes, which we'll be discussing shortly. Further, in the bonus facts today, we'll also be looking into the results of a series of defecation-related polls we did, which revealed some rather interesting things about people's bathroom habits. But first, as to the toilet paper roll orientation question, statistically, hanging toilet paper in the over-orientation is the more popular choice with a 1989 survey for the book, the first really important survey of American habits, finding that 68% of Americans preferred to hang TP in this way. Similarly, in our own poll delving into the same question, with about 20,000 voters, the numbers skewed at 71% preferring over, 6% under, 8% vertical, and 15% not caring. In yet another poll posted a few minutes later looking at what people actually do instead of preferences, this one with 22,000 voters, 78% claim the usual orientation in their household is over, and 14% stated vertical is the norm for them. Moving on from our polls, many others we looked at more or less all agree with this fact that approximately two-thirds of people across all ages and genders prefer the over-orientation for hanging toilet paper. One potential to discrepancy to this, however, had to do with earning power, with one survey finding that whereas approximately two-thirds of people who earned 50000 or more a year preferred over, approximately the same percentage who earned less than 20000 actually preferred under. Something the authors of that one were forced to admit was interesting, but they had no reasonable explanation for. And we're not going to lie, that one also had us stumped, so we went ahead and ran our own poll to see if our audience results matched this oddity or not. And it turns out, for whatever it's worth, our audience showed no such significant discrepancy. Of the approximately 60,000 voters, about 18,000 of them made more than 50,000 per year, with 10% of those reporting they preferred under to over. Similarly, about 15,000 voters reported making less than 20,000 per year, with 12% of them opting for under instead of over. So that's people's preferences, but is there an objectively superior way to hang toilet paper? As alluded to, it turns out yes, or at least when talking multiple excrement ejectors using the same toilet. You see, as noted by a 2011 study, Microbiology, Biogeography of Public Restroom Surfaces, as is probably a surprise to no one, bathrooms are absolutely caked with microbes of all sorts. In this specific study, they were interested in the types and distributions of certain microbes, examining various parts of 12 restrooms such as toilet seats, doors, and sink handles, floors, etc. And for the curious, the same microbes were present in both men's and women's restrooms. However, the ladies' rooms had much higher concentrations of certain ones, such as lactobacilli, with these higher concentrations attributed to the high prevalence of said microbes in a certain lady bit and the urine of women, thus more frequently finding its way from said lady bit onto the surfaces of those facilities. So what does this have to do with toilet paper orientation? The surfaces around the toilet seat, like the flushing control mechanism, toilet seat, etc., contain an awful lot of potential pathogens. And as a fun aside, presumably owing to people triggering the flush with their feet, they found that the flushing mechanism in some cases also had similar microbe concentration types as the floor around the toilet, which had the highest diversity of any surface in the bathroom. Thus, when looking at toilet paper roll orientation at facilities in which a plurality of people use the marvel that is the modern toilet, the the argument is that the over-orientation is superior because the under significantly increases the likelihood of users of that toilet paper touching the wall. This would have the dual effect of both spreading microbes from their potentially soiled hands to the wall and also will transfer what's on the wall to said individual's hands. The over-orientation has no such wall-touching problem. That said, given the rather exposed nature of toilet paper in some public restrooms, it's potentially already got a lot of such microbes on it at least the first squares you tear off. But it's all about minimizing exposure where possible and then washing your hands after. So avoiding touching the walls, which are not always frequently clean 
cleaned by maintenance staff, unlike other surfaces in the restroom, is a generally good idea. On that note of the disgustingness of public restrooms, we should probably mention here that while you might think, well I can just go wash my hands after, so who cares what I touch, it turns out that according to a 2011 study, bacterial hand contamination and transfer after use of contaminated bulk soap refillable dispensers, the common refillable liquid soap dispensers themselves are contaminated approximately 25% of the time, including the soap containing some potentially harmful microbes, such as Klebsiella pneumoniae, which in your intestines isn't usually an issue, but elsewhere in your body can be, for example causing about 5% of all cases of community acquired pneumonia. On top of that, those who use these contaminated dispensers actually showed a 26 fold increase in gram negative microbes on their hands after washing their hands than what they had on them before, 26 times more microbes. As the researchers summed up, we therefore conclude that washing with contaminated soap not only defeats the purpose of hand washing, but may contribute to the transmission of potentially harmful bacteria. That's not to mention the microbes often found on the paper used to dry your hands, and don't even get us started on the concentration of microbes if you use the air blowers in public restrooms instead. And even with uncontaminated soap, you aren't necessarily going to get all harmful microbes off your hands by washing them, which was also very clearly illustrated in the aforementioned 2011 study. So let's just say here that while studies do show a rather large net benefit in most cases when you wash your hands after using the restroom, particularly if the restroom is equipped with refill soap containers that are sealed from the factory rather than having workers on hand refill them, overall even if washing your hands it still behooves you to minimize contact with surfaces in public bathrooms where possible. Of course in your own home, given studies generally show your gut and skin surface microbe colonies are approximately the same as those you cohabitate with, this microbe argument perhaps isn't quite as big of a deal as when you're out and about. So at your home what is superior? As for the reasonable pros for over, this is mostly summed up by saying that over is easier to grab and tear thanks to the dangly bit flapping in the wind as God intended for all dangly things. Others do advocate many other reasons over is superior, but these are objectively mostly inconsequential. For example, it's often claimed by over supporters that it is the correct way because manufacturers print their patterns assuming you will hang them in this orientation. But that's only a thing because manufacturers know it's the preferred hanging method. And anyway, does anyone actually care that the pattern appears in both correctly or not, we're guessing not outside of novelty toilet paper. Others argue that because Seth Wheeler's 19th century patent for rolled toilet paper explicitly shows the toilet paper hung in the over orientation, that this proves this is the correct way. But we're guessing those same people aren't caring that they pronounce UFO as UFO instead of UFO as the coiner of said term intended, among countless other examples like this where the creator of something's thoughts were ignored. The only reason individuals putting forth this argument care what the fittingly named Mr. Wheeler drew on his patent application is that it vaguely supports their position. In the end, what the original creator of something thought was best doesn't inherently matter to what's actually superior. If it did, we'd all be advocating for Greedo shooting first and using bubble wrap as wallpaper, which is actually what it was originally intended for. On the flip side, advocates for the under orientation note that it tends to provide a slightly more tidy appearance rather than just dangling out there in its best imitation of a kilted Scotsman. And most importantly there, if one has beings of the feline or human parasite persuasion, the more concealed under orientation tends to prove less tempting for those two groups to play with. So to sum up, in public restrooms, to minimize the microbial exposure as much as humanly possible, the over or occasionally parallel to the wall orientation would seem to be the definitively correct orientation thanks to minimizing the potential for your fingers to touch the disgusting surfaces of the wall. And as for in your own home where this is less of a potential problem as you already regularly share fecal matter and associated microbes with those you live with, the answer is slightly more sullied, varying based on factors like majority preference of the members of the household and whether or not you happen to have a toddler or cohabitate with one of our feline overlords. However, given about two thirds of humans and 100% of cats seem to prefer the over orientation, it's probable that in your household, if it be a bastion of democracy rather than ruled by a ruthless dictator or governed via an archaic monarchical 
vehicle system, that the correct orientation is generally going to be over. Speaking of doing things the correct way, learning skills on Skillshare. For those unfamiliar, Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people, which has thousands of classes on a myriad of topics for individuals of all skill levels from beginner to master. These classes include video lessons and projects with topics covering all manner of things from photography, video production, creative writing, art, music, productivity, business, entrepreneurship, web development, and much, much more. Members receive unlimited access to those classes with most lessons under 60 minutes, so easy to fit into your schedule. And hey, if you happen to be stuck at home right now and wanting to change things up a bit, why not go check out their classes on interior design, such as Rose Stanek's Interior Design, Interior Decorate Like a Boss. Or if you're tired of cooking the same old things, they've got loads of cooking classes to choose from. For me, if you've been listening to our Brain Food Show podcast, which you absolutely should be because it's extremely well rated, you know, among other things, I've been mowing through Peter Hanley's phenomenal Il Metodo Spanish Learning Series there, as sometime in the latter half of the year we're going to be offering a Spanish version of our content, so I'm trying to learn as quickly as possible to oversee that. Whatever you want to learn, Skillshare is a great platform to do it on. There are no ads, the classes are ultra high quality, and the community there also provides great support as you're leveling up your skills. So if that sounds interesting to you, please do go check out Skillshare using the link below. The first 1,000 of you that click that link will get a two-month free trial of premium membership to explore your creativity and learn interesting new things. Now let's get into the bonus facts, shall we? So as mentioned, just for fun, this last week we ran several other wiping and toilet paper related polls with some rather interesting results. First, of 32,000 voters, 65% report that when they're wiping, they fold the toilet paper. 20% crumple, 9% wrap the toilet paper around their hands, and oddly 6% reported other. Which we're not going to lie here, we only put other in because it's always good to put that in the polls when you can, but we're not really sure what people are doing here. Like origami? Whatever the case, other interesting data points include of 48,000 voters, 28% primarily wipe while standing up, 64% primarily wipe while sitting down, and 7% are ambi wipers, reportedly wiping sitting or standing approximately equally. Moving on from there to a poll where approximately 43,000 people revealed their primary wiping method. In this, approximately 70% of men reported the primarily wipe front to back, while 30% wipe back to front. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the ladies voted at a slightly greater clip for primarily using front to back wiping at 80% of respondents, with the remaining 20% going with back to front as their primarily wiping method, much to the horror of many a commenter on that particular poll. In yet another poll, this one with just shy of 50,000 voters, 82% of people reported using toilet paper as their primary cleaner after rear expulsions, with a mere 10% reported using some form of water or bidet system. It is at this point we feel compelled to make a public service announcement that good bidet seat add-on devices cost only $30 to $50 and take a mere 10 minutes to install with no special skills needed to do such installations. This reduces toilet paper usage to almost nothing save a little drying and leaves you vastly cleaner, including for the ladies for a bit of extra cleaning during periods, while also being much easier on sanitation systems. This is also significantly more environmentally friendly given the massive amounts of water, chemicals, and trees used in toilet paper production. And even if you don't care about any of that, everybody likes saving money and the annual savings on toilet paper, particularly for households with many humans, is significant. So link below to those bidets and hey, on top of all the other benefits, if you use that link, you'll get to say you supported Today I Found Out by having a cleaner backside. It's really win-win all around. In any event, as to the rest of the respondents on that one, 4% note using their hand as the primary wiping method, the remaining 4% went with other, which we can only assume primarily as people using wet wipes. Although note on that one, another public service announcement. As we outlined in our surprisingly interesting video, What Happens After You Flush, no matter what the wet wipe package says, says, if you flush those down the toilet, your local sanitation workers despise you. As stated, sure, they are technically flushable, but so is a kitten. It doesn't mean you should. Although technically if you use a kitten to wipe, you don't actually have to flush them because cats are kind of self-cleaning. So you wipe, let them go on their merry way, 
they'll clean themselves off, and you can reuse again. Save money on toilet paper. No need for a bidet at all. But going back to wet wipes, as with kittens you decide to flush, these wet wipes must be removed in some facilities manually from the wastewater and sent off to a landfill somewhere. This is in contrast to toilet paper, which naturally breaks down quickly in the systems. Further, wet wipes are frequently the source of clogs in the sanitation systems at various points, which means they're just a big and constant headache for sanitation workers, which in turn means more tax money spent to deal with the issue. So don't flush the wet wipes, just get a bidet, toilet seat, add-on, or use your cat. So thanks for watching that video. If you liked it, please do go check out our sponsor below. It helps support the show. And if you don't have a bidet, go click that link as well. Go check them out. They're cheap. We have the technology. It's way better than toilet paper. Thank you, and thank you for watching.